Richard was born in Ghana and trained in Ghana, in Fribourg and London. He worked in formation in Tanzania and in France. And since 2004, he has been serving, continues to serve as the general uh, leader of the missionaries of Africa. <coughs> Welcome. Please, ladies and gentlemen, join me. Welcome. Uh, in Tanzania, as a missionary, at the beginning of the homily, we used to say, Tumsifu Yesu Christu. And uh, somebody knows how to answer. Thank you very much. Tumsifu Yesu Christu. Milele na milele. Amen. So it means, let us praise Jesus Christ, you say, forever and ever. Amen. And here I've been hearing, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. So, uh, much as I'm very happy to and honored to be invited to step in and speak in the place of Cardinal Taxon, whom I know personally, I feel very much challenged. I would have loved to proceed otherwise. And I was indeed encouraged to do so by my conference, Father Okure, said, feel free to proceed the way you would like today. But I felt that in order to do justice to the Cardinal for the time he has put into the paper, and also to be just to you, because that is what AFGN is all about, just relations, just policies, to be just to you, participants at this important <coughs> event, I thought it would be appropriate at least to give you a taste of what the Cardinal wrote, and then uh, you can read the full text later on when it is published on the website. Is that okay? Yes. Then afterwards, I'll give you uh, something else from our own missionary perspective as a society engaged in Africa and in other parts of the world. So my intervention will be in two parts. The first part is how I have understood uh, Cardinal Jackson's talk, and then the second part it will be our mission of Africa, a practice of justice and peace, and, and integrity of creation, and marriage to that encounter and dialogue with other religions. Cardinal Jackson entitled his talk, a 30th anniversary conference of the Africa Faith and Justice Network, Roots and Roots of Justice Ministry in Africa. So the first root is R-O-O-T-S, and the second root is R-O-U-T-E-S. I hope you catch the nuance. Yes. yes. So I think the first root as being where is it rooted? Where is justice ministry in Africa rooted? And true to his biblical training, uh, with very much, with which I identify myself very much because uh, while he was doing his doctorate at the Biblicum, I was doing my license at the time and we used to share notes on some courses. <laughs> <laughs> so, true to his biblical training, he has given us in the first part what we call the biblical routine of justice ministry from the Old Testament perspective and then he leads on to the New Testament perspective. So from the Old Testament perspective, for example, he quotes the example of Abraham, Moses, the nation Israel, the prophets, the kings, and each time he points out that righteousness and faith go hand in hand, and that the human person is invited to be committed to justice, to work for liberation from structures of oppression, as Moses did, in a covenant relationship with God, and that God's people are to denounce injustices of different kinds in their midst in order to promote justice for the poor, the weak of society, orphans, widows, and strangers. And uh, he acknowledges that this mission has not always been lived out fully by Israel, thus the desire, and the desire for a figure who would incarnate justice for all. And uh, this brings him to the New Testament, and in the New Testament he sees this incarnation of justice for all in the person of Jesus, in his person, his message, and his lifestyle. 
the values of the kingdom that he stands for, and how Jesus involved the, his disciples to continue the work that he himself had received from the Father. And uh, he, he, he has this to say, he says, the image of God of the Old Testament and of Jesus is a God who loves justice and righteousness. What he loves, he brings to pass and establishes it as a mission for those who experience who experience a, a justice. And the sense of justice in the Bible in general terms, he identifies it in terms of a triple fidelity, namely fidelity to the demands of uh, the relationship with God, fidelity to our fellow human beings, in the case of the Bible, to the fellow Israelite, and fidelity to the land. And it will be important to listen to that because he's going to come back to it later on in another perspective when he speaks about communion. So that is how I understand the first part when he speaks about the rooting of justice ministry in Africa. Now the root, so R-O-U-T-E-S, of justice ministry in Africa, he says the church continues the mission of Jesus, the mission of justice, and uh, the church is invited to be a sign, a seed, and an instrument of the kingdom. And they will recognize uh, the teachings of Vatican II. What is the church? The church is not a kingdom. The church does not equal the kingdom, but the church is a sign, a seed, and an instrument of the kingdom. And uh, thank you very much. And from there, in order to explicit and to to show what he's meaning, he goes into three major texts that underline the importance of how the church in living her vocation as sign, seed, and instrument of the kingdom promotes justice. These are the 1971 Synod of Bishops on Justice in the World, the second one, the first African Synod in 1994, and the second one, the second African Synod which took place in 2009. So coming to the first African to the uh, Synod of Bishops on Justice in the World, he saw it as an invitation to read the signs of the time by observing, analyzing, and evaluating the uh, reality as they present themselves in a given context in order to respond effectively to the situation, to hear the cry of the poor. And the message from this synod, which has become a key passage for many missionary congregations, and I identify with it fully for our own society. It says the following on number six of this document, uh, Justice in the World. It says, action on behalf of justice and participation in the transformation of the world fully appear to us as constituent, constitutive elements, dimension of the preaching of the gospel, or in other words, of the church's mission for the redemption of the human race and its liberation from every repress, oppressive situation. To be on mission, to preach the gospel, the document says, the synod says, is to engage oneself in justice. And uh, that means we have to have the courage to denounce injustice with prudence and with firmness. And also to have the courage to examine our own lives and to respond accordingly in terms of conversion. And he picks up the, the, the logo, the motto of um, Pope Paul the Sith when he said, if you want peace, work for justice. In his, in his uh, message for World Peace Day in 1972. And there, the Cardinal says, he sees that in the foundation of AFGN 30 years ago, and AEFGN, the European counterpart later on, and even some, space, some different uh, decisions and uh, policies that have been put in place by the Conference of Bishops in Africa and elsewhere respond in a way to this message of the Synod on Justice in the World and to the call of the Pope to work for peace through working for justice. So that is the first uh, foundational document he sees. The second one is about the first African Synod. And the first African Synod, he points out, 
was marked by two events. One was the genocide in Rwanda that began on the 6th of April with the shooting down of the plane of the presidents. And the second was the democratic elections in South Africa on the 27th of April, bringing to an end the apartheid regime. Both events, though different, really showed that the church has to have a word of hope and encouragement to bring in order to strengthen all Africans with hope for a genuine liberation and to show that light will overcome darkness. That is the context of the, sec of the first African Synod and it was precisely entitled the Synod of Resurrection and Hope. <coughs> and uh, he dwells a bit on the image of the church as family of God from the positive perspective, see it as something that speaks of the identity and nature of the church and the call for all, for an all-inclusive communion. And communion is a word that he would underline again in another part of this uh, document. <coughs> Moving on to the second African synopsis, so that's the third document he sees as how we cannot be saved without Mother Earth. In the forthcoming document that has uh, actually been uh, published by the World Council of Churches, a new mission affirmation, it also approaches the question of reconciliation from this perspective. Cardinal Texan has some strong words to say about why it is important to work for communion across what divides Africans today. He says this, in the second African Synod, the church in Africa recognizes that she becomes truly a church witness and a church family to the extent that she promotes an African church and society that is truly family of God, where people are reconciled over and above their tribal and ethnic ties, their racial and caste de determinations, and their gender prejudices. The church in Africa recognizes that she can become truly the witness of Christ and the family of God only to the extent that she becomes and promotes an African society that is sincere in this respect of for law and order, water, for law and order, for the respect of the rights of others, for an equal access to the resources of the land and water, and therefore a society that does social justice and lives in communion and enjoys peace. Communion, peace, commitment for justice and peace. So that he concludes uh, with a message that we had already this morning. Mission focused in on uh, justice, on faith, and on worship cannot but lead us to really working in terms of justice for Africa in the context where we are. Since mission along with faith and worship define our essence as Christians. And this mission enjoins AFGN, AFGN, and us all to justice. So this, my brothers and sisters, is what I've understood of Cardinal's uh, uh, presentation. And I would like to add to that now something from our own perspective.